This is the story of the murder of Joy Morgan. Joy Morgan was born on the 12th of February 1998 into a loving Jamaican immigrant family which consisted of her mum and siblings. Growing up, her mum Carol said that she lived up to her name by being an absolute joy to be around and thoughtful and caring towards others and her siblings. Joy viewed education as important and she would nag her cousins, sisters and brothers to excel at it and to become the best they can be. Her brother Earl stated that she was always making sure that they were either looking for jobs or going to college so that they could make the most out of their lives. Therefore it did not come as a shock to anyone when Joy decided to be a midwife. At the time of her disappearance, Joy was practicing midwifery at the University of Hertfordshire. Joy aspired to become a doctor when she finished her midwifery course, but unfortunately, her dreams did not come true. Joy was marred by deaths in her family. Her uncle Prince, who she was particularly close to, died of cancer in 2006. Six years later, her stepfather also tragically died of the same illness. Then in 2014, her father committed suicide. Joy's family stated that not long after her father's death, she became interested in the Israel United in Christ Church, also known as the IUIC. The Israel United in Christ Church was founded in 2003 in New York and is part of a movement called the Black Hebrew Israelites. They have around 40 churches and was founded by Ben Ani Ben Israel. The Israel United in Christ Church teaches that descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel and the true biblical Jews are the African Americans, West Indians and Native Americans of North and South America. The Southern Poverty Law Center, a non-profit organization based in Birmingham, Alabama, which tackles white supremacy, has deemed the IUIC as a hate group for their racism against whites, anti-Semitism and their anti-LGBT beliefs. In January 2016, Joy joined the UK branch of the organization, which was based in the center of Ilford, East London after watching their videos on the internet. She became an active member of the church. She ran the children's group and hardly ever missed a church service. Carol, Joy's mother, noticed a change in Joy's behaviour. Carol said that her daughter started to look at the family who she once respected and accepted as diseased sinners because they did not convert to the faith. Joy's newfound beliefs caused a lot of tension in the house. After having enough of Joy's behaviour, Carol took Joy's laptop away from her, which prompted Joy to move out of the house and she became homeless. She was then rehoused by the local council and then moved into student accommodation in her first year of university. On the 26th of December 2018, Joy was at an RUIC church celebration. Six weeks later, Cal received a phone call from the estate agent that looked after Joy's student accommodation, saying that she did not pay her rent and her housemates have not seen her since Christmas. On the 7th of February, Carol reported her daughter missing and the police started investigating her disappearance. Police were informed by Joy's housemates that she was a member of the IUIC and the police got the contact details of members of the church from Joy's landlord. Police started making calls to members of the church and one of the members was then 40-year-old Shofar El Israel. Shofar El Israel, original name Ajibola Shogbamimu, was introduced to the church by his wife and joined in December 2016. He was given the name of Shofar by the church and is stood for Ram's Horn for his booming voice, which proved useful, especially during street preaching. Israel was so popular amongst the leaders of the church that he climbed up to the rank of soldier very quickly. Church members described him as enthusiastic and as willing to help in any way, shape or form. 
When chauffeur was first questioned by the police, he told them that Joy was his and his wife's friend and he last saw Joy on the 26th of December when he gave her a lift to her flat after the church meal. Two days later, while driving, police pulled him over and arrested him after finding Joy's keys in his car. On the 27th of February, Joy's family were told that Israel was charged with murder and he pleaded not guilty. On the 8th of July 2019, the trial took place at Reading Crown Court. Israel stated that he dropped Joy off at her home in Hatfield, Hertfordshire on the 26th of December. However, phone evidence showed that Joy's phone and Israel's phone was at his flat in Cricklewood, North London together for two nights. Presented by this evidence, he admitted to taking Joy back to his place. He said the reason why he did not initially disclose this information to the police before was because he did not want his wife or others getting the wrong idea, as the church forbids men and women spending time together unless they are married. Israel stated that Joy was upset and was thinking about leaving the church, hence why he let her stay over at his flat in Cricklewood while his wife stayed in their house in Luton. Israel claimed that over the next two days, he and Joy spent their time watching videos of ex-members on YouTube, and then he dropped her off at her flat. He denied having sex with Joy, as he said he viewed her like a daughter. On the 28th of December, around 7.30pm, Joy's telephone number was abruptly removed from the church group instant messaging chat on Telegram. Church members said that they were surprised by this as Joy did not seem disillusioned with the organisation. Various people tried to contact her to no avail. As Joy failed to turn up to church the next day, two members of the church went to her house looking for her, including Israel himself. However, church members did not contact Carol about her daughter going missing. In court, the jury heard that Israel's car was picked up on cameras near Stevenage, Hertfordshire. Around the same time, Joy's phone sent a signal from the same area on the 28th of December. Over the next three days, he tried calling her and went to her house several times to check up on her. However, this was all to cover up his crime. The prosecution concluded that Israel removed her number from the group after he killed her. His car was in Stevenage, as he was probably looking for somewhere to get rid of her body. Joy's phone sent its final signal in the early hours of New Year's Day in Stevenage, and Israel's phone was also in the same area. After the four-week trial, a jury of eight women and four men found Israel guilty of murder on the 5th of August 2019. He was sentenced to a minimum of 17 years. In his closing statement, Judge Mr Justice Saul told Israel, Only you know the circumstances or details of your terrible deed and why you did it. You are evidently an intelligent man and have said nothing beyond the lies and explanations which the jury has rejected. One month from the guilty verdict, Joy's name disappeared from the tabloids. However, there were still questions from Joy's family that remained unanswered, such as, why did he kill Joy? Where did he put her body? And why did the church not do enough? Israel still denied murdering Joy and therefore did not disclose where he put her body. Carol was adamant that Joy's body was going to be found. Carol's predictions came true because on the 10th of October, 2019, remains that were found in the woodlands in Stevenage by a dog walker was confirmed to be that of Joy Morgan. A post-mortem examination could not determine the cause of death, and further examinations were carried out. However, a year on from the murder, there are still questions surrounding the incident. Till this day, Israel is refusing to say the reasons why he killed Joy and how he killed her. So, for Joy's family, there are still questions that need to be answered. Thank you for watching this video. 
please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This has been The Unreported.